YouTube channel over the past few years, the one thing that we've both come to value and aspire to most is production quality. Just about anyone can stitch a few clips together and call it good, but we really want to focus on making content that is beautiful and meaningful. One of the most important steps in that process for us has been investing in quality gear. A couple months ago we decided we'd go ahead and revamp our entire basic camera kit. What I mean by that is that we sort of had a mismatch of Nikon and Panasonic gear, but we decided we'd go ahead and switch over all of our stuff to Panasonic gear. And the reason we really like Panasonic is because, in my mind, they're basically one of the only companies that makes true hybrid cameras. What do I mean by that? Well, they make photo cameras first, but their video features that they pack into their photo cameras is so good that you can use these cameras basically as cinema cameras. So we've got two S5s, these are full frame mirrorless cameras, but they also have a lot of features that we really, really needed. Uh, first of all, they've got flip out screens, which are really good because we do a lot of self recording. They got a nice viewfinder, a nice durable body and frame that is really, really good for handling uh, adverse weather conditions, you know, nice and weather sealed. And also they record in uh, video recording formats. Uh, that are really really high quality. So these are 10-bit cameras and they record in log recording modes too. So basically what that means is that we're able to pull our footage into uh, DaVinci Resolve and edit them and uh, put pretty intense color grades on them and they still hold up. So basically it's everything you could ever want if you are producing both video and photos at the same time and uh, you don't want to invest in a cinema camera per se, uh, this is probably the next best option. The only other camera that's kind of in this same ballpark is going to be the a7S III from Sony, but that camera costs about double this. So really good value for money, and we've been really pleased with them. And then as far as lenses go, we've got the 24-105 f4, and it's a really good all-around zoom lens, nice and sharp, and it's got a very versatile range and it allows us to record our adventures uh, with all sorts of different focal lengths. In addition to that 24 to 105, we do have two other autofocusing lenses. First, we have this 35 millimeter from Sigma. It's an F2, really great for low light situations and has a beautiful depth of field. Also from Sigma, we have this 100 to 400 lens. I've really come to enjoy using this lens, primarily for wildlife photography as it's got a great reach on it, but I've also really enjoyed it for portraits and landscape as well. We do have a dedicated review for this lens. You can check that out right here. Now we don't have any sort of fancy or special Peter McKinnon Polar Pro filters or anything like that. Uh, we have just a basic variable neutral density filter uh, for helping us get the correct shutter speeds when we are recording video, and it's from a company called Bauer. I think it came from Adorama, and I think it was 30 bucks. It's not the most high quality filter of all time, but it gets the job done, and maybe we'll upgrade this at some point down, down the line. We do also have a small collection of these little vintage uh, Canon FD manual focus lenses from like the 70s and 80s and these are not ridiculously sharp lenses. Basically the reason we have these is because it's nice to have uh, some manual focus glass that has a, uh, a very nice focus throw and also they have a certain character to them that is really good for making uh, videos that you want to have a more filmic look to them if you want to cut down on the digital look. These are a great way to do it and these are really inexpensive. You can get lenses like these for 20 30 40 dollars all day on eBay. Um, I'll probably make a dedicated video to these at some point but uh, we pull these out occasionally. Now for a gimbal we do have a Zhiyun Weeble S. This gimbal is lightweight, inexpensive, and it's got enough carrying capacity to be able to hold our cameras no problem. We do also have a drone in our kit. This is the DJI Mini 2. We love it because it's really small, packs up really late, and it's easy to take anywhere with us, and it has upped our production quality so much. Currently, our camera is set up on a inexpensive tripod 
from Amazon from a company called Dolica. And I like this tripod simply because it's inexpensive, yet it's not so cheap that it feels like a complete piece of junk. It strikes up a good balance between cost, size and weight, and build quality. All right, we both have our own individual camera bags. Mine is the Freeline BP350AW. And mine is the Photo Traveler 150. It's a lot easier. Yeah. And mine's, of course, a, a, a much bigger bag. It's one of the types of bags, kind of like the Peak Design bags, that has, you know, side access to your gear. Um, and it's got a lot of space for putting all sorts of things. Mine's a lot smaller, a lot simpler. I wanted something that I could just throw a few lenses in and run. And it does just that. You can see on the inside it's got enough carrying space for a body and a few lenses, maybe a few other things, and then it's got lots of pockets for smaller gear. And we also both have camera straps from Peak Design. These are the slide straps. Mine is the full-size one, and yours is the whatever the slightly smaller <laughs> version is. <laughs> so now we come to a, another bit of kit that we recently received from Side by Side Gear. So Side by Side has been kind enough to uh, sponsored this video in that they provided for us uh, some products. This being one of them, this is the Power Packer, and basically it's a great little organization tool. Inside you can put all sorts of things. It could be used for like just everyday carry items, but for us it really works well for carrying like charging cables and some other photo equipment. We've got several batteries for our cameras, SD cards in here, and this is great because it just keeps all this stuff contained and I can just grab it put it into my backpack and I know I have all the accessories I need when we go out onto a shoot. They also sent us one of their dry bags. This one's really dirty right now because I recently used it when I went out on my solo backpacking trip. You can see the video for that on our channel as well. And uh, yeah, these are some really nice products that they were nice enough to send out and they also were willing to uh, sponsor us for doing a giveaway. So we recently passed a milestone of 4,000 subscribers. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving away uh, these products uh, thanks to Side by Side Gear. So in order to enter for that, it's really simple. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to us and you follow us on Instagram, comment on this video, and comment on the post that correlates to it on our Instagram page, and we'll randomly select a winner. And Side by Side Gear is going to uh, send out these products to you. So thanks again Side by Side Gear for uh, your partnership with us on this video. Now for audio recording, most of the trip videos that we do, we actually record with just a small little shotgun microphone. This is from Boya, and you can pick these up all day on Amazon really inexpensively. I'm pretty sure this is just about an exact copy of the same little microphone that Rode makes, but this microphone is way, way cheaper. I think you can get these for like 20 or 25, $30 or so, and the quality on them is surprisingly good. They also don't require any batteries, so you can just simply plug this into your camera. And if your camera is, has a decently good preamp like our Panasonic cameras do, uh, then this is good to just run all day. You don't have to worry about it, and you know you're gonna pick up much better audio than you would with the internal microphones on the camera. It also comes with a little wind sock in order to cut down on wind noise, and it works really well. Then sometimes we'll occasionally hook up a zoom uh, H1 as a little recorder. We'll basically just stick this in the back pocket of whoever's on camera and we'll link up a lav mic. That works really good. The only downside of that is that we have to sync up the audio in post. Adds a little step into the post-production process, but it gives us really good audio quality if uh, one of us is away from the camera a significant distance. And then finally, the microphone that we have up on the camera right now, the one we try to use in scenarios where we're not traveling a bunch, where we can, uh, we can handle a larger microphone on the camera, is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Uh, essentially, it's the most high quality microphone that I've ever used that still uses a three and a half mil mic jack. You know, stepping up to something better than this is gonna result in you having an XLR cable, which would be, which, would be nice, but for us still trying to remain somewhat compact, this microphone is great. And uh, we actually don't own this microphone. Uh, we do uh, some work on the side for a nonprofit ministry, and they're kind enough uh, in exchange, they uh, let us borrow some of their equipment. So that belongs to them, and we really like using it. Also, I do have a set of Senel uh, 
SMH500 headphones. These are a nice inexpensive set of headphones. They're comfortable, they have good audio uh, quality, and I primarily use them for editing videos at my computer station, but I can also plug them straight into the uh, Panasonic S5, into the headphone jack and monitor audio if I'm uh, working more on a set where I can monitor the audio. You know, I'm obviously not taking these out onto a long hike with me, but on uh, shoots like this where we're talking to camera, it's nice to have this just to double check audio before we start rolling. First of all, in terms of our editing solutions, I do have a custom built PC. You can watch the video that I made uh, several months ago where I basically went over all of the parts I put into that build, and uh, it's been pretty good so far. Uh, it does have a basic um, Intel i7 chip, the 10700K chip. I believe that's still the latest generation of that chip from Intel. And it's got a basic graphics card, nothing too fancy, but it is plenty powerful enough for running our video editing software, uh, of which we actually use DaVinci Resolve Studio. And you might be wondering, Dylan, why do you use Resolve and not uh, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro? And the simple reason is uh, we don't use Final Cut because we're not uh, we're not Mac users. I've never owned a Mac. I do not like Macs, so that's obviously disqualified. And then also, uh, we used to use Premiere Pro, but frankly, I just got sick and tired of paying so much for it month to month. Uh, the subscription fees became a little outrageous. Uh, whereas DaVinci Resolve, you can still just buy outright, and it's a fair price. And for color grading, I actually far prefer DaVinci over the other editing softwares. For photo editing, we use Lightroom uh, from Adobe. Uh, I think that's what everybody uses. Also, a lot of people want to know where we get our music from. So we actually have MusicBed's uh, basic subscription model that they offer. It's inexpensive and it allows you pretty much unlimited access to uh, high quality music. Uh, we're not sponsored by them. They do sponsor a lot of content on YouTube, but they don't sponsor ours. We just really like their service, and we really like the selection of music that they have. That's pretty much all of the gear that we use for our videos on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave them below, and don't forget to enter into our giveaway for that nice gear from Side by Side. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.